can get a tear in the retina because as that jelly separates, it can pull in some weak areas of the retina and cause a tear. And that can be dangerous because fluid can now go in the tear and cause a retinal detachment. This is relatively easily treated when you have a retinal tear so that the retinal detachment can be prevented, but there's no way for you as the patient to know the difference between having a retinal tear and not having a retinal tear. So that's why it's very important to be seen uh, by a very good general ophthalmologist or a retina specialist uh, within the next business day, so hopefully within 24 to 48 hours. Well, the ophthalmologist or the retina specialist will have to do a dilated exam. And when one does a dilated exam, one looks around the peripheral retina or the outer part of the retina very, very carefully. Uh, and oftentimes this has to include a scleral depression. And what that means is that the doctor will dilate your eye with drops and will usually lie you down and use a indirect ophthalmoscope, which is a light on the doctor's a headband uh, to shine right into your eye and an instrument to press around the eye so the entire retina can be very, very carefully studied to make sure that there's no tear present. Well, a retinal tear means that when that jelly separated, it pulled on the retina and caused a little tear, but no fluid has gone in yet because as soon as fluid goes in, we call that a retinal detachment and the treatment changes entirely. So that's why it's very important to catch this early if a retinal tear is present before it becomes a retinal detachment. And a retinal tear is treated one of two ways. One can either laser around it to seal it up or one can freeze it uh, to seal it up. But either way, that way the tear is sealed up entirely so fluid can't go in and create a retinal detachment. But that has to be done before fluid goes in because if fluid has already gone in, then no longer is it a tear, it's a retinal detachment, and now we're talking about other more invasive forms of treatment. Now what's happened is that fluid has gone into the retinal tear, and fluid has separated the retina, and the retina is starting to fall off like wallpaper coming off the wall. At this point, just doing a laser alone or doing a freeze freezing treatment alone is not sufficient because fluid has already gone in and retinal detachments can be treated one of three ways. Um, one can either do something called a pneumatic retinopexy, which is usually done in the office where either an air bubble or more frequently a gas bubble is injected, and that gas bubble from the inside of the eye presses on the retina to flatten it and push the fluid out so that the doctor can then go ahead and either laser that tear to seal it up now because the fluid is gone, or freeze it. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to do something called a scleral buckle procedure where the patient is taken to the operating room uh, and a band, much like a belt that goes around your waist, is placed around the retina and the tear is frozen at the same time and sometimes the fluid is also drained. Um, or the third way is to do something called a vitrectomy where using an automated device, the vitreous jelly is removed and oftentimes either air or a gas bubble is placed and the uh, retinal tear is either frozen as before or treated with laser photocoagulation. And the shape of the retinal detachment, the location, whether there's blood or not, um, and the surgeon's preference uh, will determine which one of these three different methods he chooses. Well, if, if I suddenly saw flashes and floaters in my eye, um, what I would do is to make sure that I got the first available appointment to my ophthalmologist or my retinal specialist so that I can have a complete dilated examination. I wouldn't wait much longer than the very first business day because I have no way of knowing whether there's a tear or not or indeed whether if there's a retinal detachment or not. So once that examination was done, I could be treated if I had a retinal tear as I've described before. If I had a retinal detachment, what I would see is I would not just see flashes and floaters, but oftentimes I would also see a black curtain either coming from the side or from the top or from the bottom. And that curtain would approach my visual field like a black curtain being drawn across or pulled down or up. And if that happened, I definitely would not wait at all and that would be considered an emergency. I would call my ophthalmologist or I would call my retina specialist immediately to get in uh, and be seen.